there to see Praise the Lord Jesus. All right, so we're going to get to the scene as quickly as possible. So I'm going to ask uh, uh, Brother Scott and Brother Calvin if they would come forward and receive the offerings. And then we will invite our guest singer to come up. Guys, here's what I pray for today. I pray that if you don't know Christ the Savior, today is your day. I pray if you say, well, I know the Lord, but I haven't been really following Him. I pray today is your day. If you've been following the Lord, I pray you worship Him. You say, just have a great day. So let's uh, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I ask Brother Calvin if the way leads to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here in your house this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you most of all for the blood shed on Calvary, Father, for the remission of sins, Lord. And I pray that you'll forgive me where I fail, if possible, terribly, and miserably short of the Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll bless these offering ties, Lord God, as we're about to take a part of them, that it will help to further your kingdom, Lord God. It might go out to yes. touch a lost and dying world in some way, Lord God. Bless this church, bless our pastor, Lord. Bless our revival, Lord, in a special way and according to your will. And as I said before, we pray that if there's one lost among us, Lord God, that don't know your Savior, that today will be the day. Yes. To know you before it's ever lasted too late. Be with us, guys, and direct us in all things. Let us be quick to give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 be back with y'all. Um, hasn't been very long for most of us, Daniel. <laughs> they skipped out on me last, what, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, or something like that. Anyway, I'm always glad to be back here, and uh, I hope to be a blessing to you. I do have some different new newer music today, uh, finally. <laughs> it's been a year in making, but I uh, finally have the new CD, and uh, in the meantime, God wrote a book, and I'm just, I live on cloud nine all day, every day, <laughs> praising God for all he does, and so um, what a great life we have, um, all because of Jesus.
God is amazing. And you know, when you're thanking Him for His mercy and His grace and all that He's doing in your life all day long, every day, you don't have time to deal with the circumstances and then He deals with it. <laughs> oh, goodness. This next one's called Seek His Face. Um, Matthew 6.33, I think, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you.
back when, I don't know, it's been a year and coming. But um, the guy at the studio, he said, stop it. I was singing through the songs trying to decide what to put on the CD. He said, stop it. I said, what? He said, what is all this? I said, it's the lyrics. And then he said, no, this. And I said, it's a dead spider. I couldn't find anything to hit it with. And I had to hit it with my paper. And that's the one he was looking at, a big black blob in the middle. He's like, Tina, what is all this on the right side? I said, it's Bible verses. He said, oh, so you write down a bunch of Bible verses and then you write a song from it. I said, no, I'm driving down the road and God writes the song. And then I come back home and get the Bible verses out that go with it. But Psalm 91.1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Surely he will deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day. It shall not come nigh thee. And then verse 10 says, There. There shall no evil befall thee. Where is there? That's where I want to stay. <laughs> abiding with God and God abiding with me. Amen. There shall no evil befall thee, nor neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee. Amen. Wow. <laughs> you, know, um, you know what? If you're not reading your Bible every day, you're missing out on all this. <laughs> I am a firm believer you've got to read the Bible. And when you're dwelling with God and God's dwelling with you, doctor can say, oh, you got cancer. And you say, okay, where do I go? What do I do? I don't know nothing about that. And you just go along your way, and then five weeks later, all the cancer's gone. I mean, it did not change who I was, my attitude. I never stared at it and said, I got cancer. I never, I never saw anybody go through cancer like I did with God. But with God... You don't have to look at the circumstances because you know God's taking care of you. And you know angels are all around you encompassed with favor. Favor is um, unfair partiality. <laughs> it's all through the Bible. Y'all read it. <laughs>
Just, just come and help me. <laughs> get up here, man. <laughs> just get up here. Just scared me. Uh, it's all over the way to the same. I need a battery. Um, so, um, y'all pray. I do have a prayer request. In January, I'll be going back to Dallas for more medical checkups. I go every six months for eight years now, eight and a half. And um, that doctor is not a Christian. And every time I go, he says, do you have any new CDs? And I've not had any for seven years, but I got one this time. Amen. And um, I know he's going to get saved. He sees a difference in me. He's never seen somebody go through cancer like I did and not have any treatments and four kinds of cancer. I'll be gone in five weeks. <laughs> he's never seen that. And he's very interested. Thank you. Thank you. You're the best. So, um, y'all pray that this CD will make him want to know more. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, they're just people that don't know. They're just missing out on the best life ever. Best life ever. Um, this next song is called He's a Water Walker. And every time I write a song, it's my favorite one. But this one stayed my favorite a long time. <laughs> he is a water walker. And he... Um, He's done lots of big miracles. We learned them in Bible school, y'all. <laughs> y'all old as I am. <laughs> He's done big old miracles. Big old miracles. He's still doing them today, if you believe. <laughs> but he's a water walker, and whatever he did for anybody in that Bible, he has no respect for persons, so he'll do it for you too.
to get saved. So if you feel something like that today, I don't think it matters what time during the service that you come down here to get saved, but it's a life like you cannot imagine living with God. say you're not going to be alive, you won't be in the choir, and yeah. all these sort of things. God just moves. Yes, he we does. trust Him. And we don't always see the miracles. I ask God sometimes, why don't we see every miracle that we pray for? Why don't we see every baby healed, every person? I don't understand all that. It 
doesn't dim my faith because I know that we pray for His will to be done. We believe that is what we pray. We have no doubt that He is the one that can change, change everything. Today, your life could be changed. Your, 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 your entire being, your, your outlook, your worldview, everything could be changed when you come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. I will ask Pastor Mike Brown if he would come and share the Word of God. Bless you, preacher. See, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's been a while since we've been over this way. Yeah. But we don't have anything new to tell you. <laughs> because I read that the scripture teaches us that he's not changed. Amen. Neither has his word changed. That's right. But we live in a world today that's changing every day. Mm. What's wrong used to be uh, wrong, but today what's bad and evil is looked at as good. We're living in, in Bible times, and I tell people all the time that we're living in, in the times that, that the Word of God teaches us about, but the most important thing is, is not who we are in the eyes of, of the world, in the eyes of society, but who we are. In the eyes of the Lord. Amen. 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 That's what's going to matter. We said yesterday, you know, a lot of people talk about death, and we've had death in our community recently. Uh, people oftentimes look at death as, and think about it that it's behind them, trying to catch up to them, and you're trying to outrun death. But no, my friend, <clears throat> death is out there in front of each and every one of us. There's a boundary. Job said there's a boundary there. And when we come to that boundary, we'll not cross. It doesn't matter how much money we have in the bank. It doesn't matter what kind of home we live in, what kind of automobile we drive, or what kind of job that we may have uh, acquired. But all that's going to matter is whether or not our name is recorded in the Lamb's Book Amen. of Amen. <coughs> We do desire your prayers today. I told Brother Daniel the other day when I talked to him, I said, I, uh, I've had a, a battle with, with allergies and, and bad sinuses, but you pray for us that uh, the Lord will touch our, our voice. But we'd like to read uh, just a few verses of Scripture found in, in the sixth chapter of the book of 2 Kings. While you're turning there, we the king of Syria had warred against uh, against Israel, and the man of God would tell the king of Israel to avoid such places wherever the king of Syria was going to have his army. And every time uh, they would uh, their trap would fail. Finally, the king said, "Who is it?" That's for the king of Israel. And one spoke and said, said none. He said, but uh, he said that, <clears throat> O king, he said, but Elisha the prophet tells the king of Israel what you're thinking in your bedchamber. So he sent out word to find, to find the man of God. And the scripture tells us that that uh, he said, go and and spy where that he may uh, where he is that I may send forth and fetch him. And uh, it was told him where he was at. And we'd like to, to be, begin reading there in verse 15. <laughs> and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master... How shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Praise the Lord. And Elijah, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of 
horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. That's all we want to read, but we'll go on to tell you that as the soldiers of the Syrian army came down to where Elisha was at, Elisha said, Lord, smite these people with blindness. And the Lord, and the Lord smote them with blindness. And he told them, he said, This is not, this is not the place. He said, I'll show you whom you seek. And, and the scripture tells us that Elisha led the army of Syria right into the middle of the city of Samaria, where the king of Israel was at. And the scripture tells us that the king of Syria, or the king of Israel, when he saw the army there, he said, Shall we smite them? And Elisha said, No, but he said, Set bread and water before them and let them go. Now, the, Elisha prayed that the Lord would open their eyes, and when they opened their eyes, they was in the middle of the enemy's camp. But what we would like to take for a little thought here the, uh, today is eyes were opened to the power of God. This young man, this servant of Elisha was worried and he, he didn't know what they were going to do because uh, the enemy had surrounded the city. But I want you to know something today, friend. Uh, that's the way it is with you and I from time to time. Uh, the enemy sometimes, he comes around howling and growling and, gro and groaning and going on and making a lot of noise uh, and trying to get you to think that you're surrounded. Oh, He comes to, to distract you from the Word of God. He comes to, de, to discourage you, to deceive you, so that He can defeat you. Listen, the devil's not playing games today. No, I tell people no, all the time, everywhere we go, how the devil is not out to just cause you to have a bad day. He's out to destroy you. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand today that God's able to open our eyes to understand and realize. As the writer said, that we're not ignorant of His devices. My friend, the more this, as the CC said about reading the Word of God, I tell people we need to read the Word of God every day. Yeah. Yes. make it a part of our daily life is to read the Scriptures because somewhere down through the day you're going to need you're going to need that sword of the Spirit and the fight against the enemy. Oh, but listen, this young man, his eyes was opened. Listen, I pray each day that God would open the eyes of the unsaved, that they may see their need of a Savior. I pray each day that He would open the eyes of our brothers and sisters, that they have a God as their priority in life. We see a lot of people today that are being distracted. We see a lot of parents uh, my friend that are being distracted by the things uh, of this life. Uh, listen, I don't have uh, anything against uh, these little leagues, uh, uh, games and things. Uh, but I told someone not long ago, uh, I said when uh, when parents, uh, my friend, uh, when it's not in the heart of the parents to go to church, uh, when the children don't see that it's a priority uh, to go to church and to Sunday school, it won't be a priority to the children. That's right. Amen. You see, we set an example to our children and grandchildren as to what is a priority in our life. Oh, but you see, God is able to open eyes huh, that people may see the power of God. Huh? And did you know that the Scripture teaches us, huh, it said, for whatsoever things were written aforetime was written for our learning, huh, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures huh, might have hope. Oh, you see, I know sometimes people say, oh, you know, all those stories back over in the Old Testament, they were just stories. But listen, I, they're there for a purpose. I, and they're there for a reason. And that is to teach you and I that we can have faith in God and we can trust Him I, and believe in what He has told us in His Word I, and that He is faithful that promise. I, but listen, the Scripture, you know, I, how that the Lord spoke unto Moses I, on the backside of the desert and told him to go back down into the land of Egypt uh, that he was going to bring the children of right. Israel out. Uh, and when Moses got down there, uh, he spoke unto Pharaoh uh, and he said, Thus saith the Lord God uh, of the Hebrews uh, of the children of Israel. Uh, he said, Let my people go. Uh, and Pharaoh said, Who uh, is the Lord uh, that I should obey his voice? Uh, listen, uh, Egypt served many gods uh, and they had a God for every occasion uh, and for every need they had a God. Uh, and the 
oh this was uh, this was one time that they was going uh, and they had their eyes open uh, under the reality that there is only one true uh, and living God uh, my the scripture tells us uh, and you can read there and we'll not go into all the plagues uh, but God uh, demonstrated uh, and these plagues uh, that was brought upon the nation of Egypt uh, and my friend it proved uh, that their gods uh, was dead that's right, right. Amen. Out of all, all these plagues had come to pass, uh, my friend, and finally Israel uh, was let go and they went out uh, into the wilderness. Uh, and the Scripture tells us uh, that the Lord, uh, He went before the children of Israel uh, in a pillar of cloud by day uh, and a pillar of fire by night. Uh, he was revealing Himself unto the children of Israel. Uh, and they were encamped down by the Red Sea. Uh, but God had pardoned Pharaoh's heart uh, and that He came after. Uh, he came after the children of Israel to destroy them. Listen, my friend. And God had, had fulfilled His covenant with Abraham in that He would bring the children of Israel out of the land of bondage and take them into the promised land. Amen. Oh, no longer would the old king say, Who is who is the Lord God of Israel that I should obey Him? Listen, he saw, he saw something that there was greater, a greater pair than all the gods of Egypt. And mind when the children of Israel looked and they saw Pharaoh's army closing in, and my, they had nowhere to run to. There was the Red Sea before them. And my, they began to cry out, and they were sore afraid. But listen, Moses said, Stand still and see the salvation of God. Listen, all we've got to do sometimes is just stand still and wait on God. Amen, brother. When we've done all that we can do, we just simply need to stand and wait on God. You see, eyes were open to the power of God. And God spoke unto Moses and told him to stretch out his rod over the Red Sea. And when he did it, the waters just began to part. And mine, it, it parted all the way to the other side. And the Scripture said that there was a, a wind that blowed all night. I, I thought about that, Brother Daniel. Some time ago, I thought about it. You know, God, He could have parted the water, dried the land all in one second. But why didn't? I thought about that and I studied and I thought about it and I thought, you know, Israel needed to learn to have patience. We need to learn to have patience to wait on God and to see the power of God work around us. Oh, oftentimes we're too impatient. And sometimes we're like, my friend, we treat God like the drive through We'll go to one window, put our order in, go around to the next window, hold our hand out, and expecting to get what we've ordered. Listen, my friend, God works on His own time frame. And He works in His own way. What we have to learn is patience. And I really believe that's why that it took all night to dry up this, this, this path through the Red Sea was to teach the children of Israel to be patient and to trust God and to wait upon Him. But you see, during all this time huh, that the wind was blowing to dry up, huh, my friend, to dry up this, huh, to make it a dry uh, uh, lake bed there. Huh, uh, listen, huh, my, the Scripture tells us that the angel of the Lord came down, took the wheels off of the chariot, huh, my friend, huh, and that pillar of fire, huh, and that pillar of cloud, it came from in front of the children of Israel huh, and behind them to protect them. You see, we need to have our eyes open that God wants to protect us. He wants to keep us. And my friend, oh, listen, my, you know how that the army of Pharaoh, they they followed in to the, to the midst of the Red Sea there. And when the children of Israel got across, the Lord spoke to Moses and told him to hold out his rod over the sea and that the water may come back together. And my friend, it destroyed Pharaoh's army. And you see, God's able to open the eyes of people to see the power of God. And too many people today uh, want to put God down on man's level. Mm, amen. Oh, you see, my friend, we need to understand God's ways are so much higher than our ways, amen. His thoughts than our thoughts. Oh, listen, He spake the Word. 
The scripture you read there in the, in the book of Genesis and the scripture said that He spake the word. God said and it was so. Everything about the creation of the earth and the universe He spake the word and created. He formed man from the dust to the ground and breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. I like to look at it as this was God's hands on creation. But when He made man in His own image and His own likeness and gave him the breath of life. Listen there's a part of God uh, that come into man. Uh, that man, uh, there's a part of him that will exist yes, listen, amen. for eternity. Amen. But you see, God's able to open eyes. God's able to open eyes to, to His power. We read in the Scripture how that uh, the Word of the Lord came unto Elijah and told him to go and tell Ahab uh, and gather up all the prophets of Baal uh, and come up on Mount Carmel. Uh, and my, you know the story how uh, they had many prophets of Baal. Uh, and my, uh, Elijah said, there's, uh, I said, there's many of you. Uh, he said, you go ahead uh, and you go first. Uh, and so they took uh, the bullock uh, and they killed him and they laid it upon the wood. And they began to cry out to their God. Uh, and you see the contest was uh, the God that answers by far will be God. Amen. Oh, I'm still, I'm still, uh, my friend, amazed at, at God uh, and how He works sometimes. Uh, listen, uh, my friend, the Scripture tells us uh, that Elijah, uh, my, when they, uh, they begin to, uh, to offer uh, uh, cries uh, unto their God Baal, uh, and finally about noon, the Scripture said uh, that there was no answer. Uh, and Elijah began to mock them. He began to make fun of them. Uh, he began to tell them maybe he's asleep. Uh, you need to cry a little louder. Uh, and oh, listen, uh, my friend, the Scripture said that they, uh, they got so desperate uh, that they cut themselves uh, with knives and lances uh, and then the blood gushed out. Uh, and they thought if they'd do this, surely their God would have them. But the Scripture said that there was none that regarded. Why? Because their God was a dead God. Oh, aren't you glad today to know that we have a a living God. Praise the Lord. My wife and I were, some years ago, we were down in Tennessee and we were going through a store. I looked over and on the shelf, uh, and there sat a statue about, uh, oh, about this wide and, and probably about that tall. Uh, and I, I spoke to my wife. I said, look, I, I said, you can buy your own God. Uh, and she said, I'm not interested. Uh, and, my, uh, and as I walked around in that store, I began to think more and more about that. Uh, and Brother Daniel, I don't know how much it weighed. I didn't pick it up. Uh, I don't remember what the price of it was. Uh, but I began to think, oh, if I bought that, uh, I'd have to pay a price. Uh, and I'd have to carry it around wherever I went. But oh, listen, I begin to rejoice and I begin to think, my friend, and God paid a price for me. And my friend, He redeemed me. And there's time, many times in my life that He's had to carry yes, me. Amen. 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 I don't have to carry my God. My God carries me. Amen. Amen. Oh, you know the, the poem or the song about the one set of footprints. I, I can look back and I can see I, more than on one occasion I, where there was just one set of footprints I, and that the Lord had to carry me. I, listen, I, I went from my highest high to my lowest low in just a matter of a few short hours. I said, Lord, I don't know how how we're going to handle this, but I've got to trust you to bring us through it. Amen. Oh, listen, my friend. God can open our eyes to see the power of God. Are we looking? Are we wanting to find the power of God? Are we looking? Elijah went over and he repaired the altar uh, and he got 12 stones uh, and set it up. Uh, he laid the wood in order. He laid the sacrifice in order. Uh, and then he told him to go get 12 barrels of water and pour it on it. Uh, and they dug a trench around it. Uh, and my friend, and it soaked, uh, it soaked the sacrifice, the wood, and filled the trench. Elijah didn't have to jump up and down, scream, squall, and holler. He didn't have to cut himself like the prophets of Baal. No, but he just went over. <coughs> 
He went over and he said, I have done. He said, he said, I have done all these things at thy word. He was talking to the Lord. He said, hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That this people may know that thou art God and that there is, and that thou hast turned their hearts back. And the scripture said, and the fire fell Amen. from heaven and consumed not only the sacrifice, but the wood and the stone and the water. Amen. You see, they saw who God was. Mm -hmm. They saw the power of God. You know what? I believe God's still able to send down the fire. Yes, He is. I believe He's able to send down the fire today. I, my friend, if we're willing I, to seek God, if we're willing to trust Him, I, I mean, oh, listen, I, my friend, there are other times that we read in the Scriptures, I, and I thought of Sissy was singing there a while ago I, about the Hebrew boys. I, and my, the king I, had made a great golden image, I, and my, he had made a, a decree, I, and he said, whosoever hears I, the sound of all these musical instruments, it's commanded that everybody bow down and worship this golden image. And my, the scripture said, the penalty for not obeying was to be cast into the, into the furnace of fire. Word come to the king, said king, these Hebrew boys that you've got set over the providence, they don't regard your decree. And my, the king called for them to come. He was going to give them another chance. Now boys, what is this that I hear in my words? And my, they begin to tell them that they needed to bow down and to worship. And the scripture tells us that the old king said, Who is that God that shall deliver thee out of my hand? The old king was full of pride. Oh, he thought he was somebody big. And he told the boys, he said, now if you be ready, ready and willing at the at the sound of the musical instruments and my but these Hebrew boys and my they answered the king and they said oh king our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand oh king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what, we better have our mind made up. Yes. That we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to go with Him all the way, regardless of what the devil tries to do to us. My the old king was furious. He was full of rage and anger. He sent word down, said, heat up the furnace. One seven times hotter than it had normally been heated. And they took the mighty men and they bound these Hebrew boys up and they cast them in to the furnace there. And it was so great that it slew the men that cast right. them in. Listen, my friend, I don't know how long a time it was later, my friend, but the king had something I I can't help but leave. I can't help but think it was the Lord that stirred his mind. Look and see if there's anything left of them boys. He looked. And he said, Hey, did we not throw three bound into the fiery furnace? He said, I see four. And they're loose. They're walking around. And the fourth, he said, the fourth is like unto the Son of God. And there was something about him. And mind, he began to call out to the boys there and to tell them to come on out. When they came out, there wasn't the smell of smoke on them. There wasn't a hair singed on them. My friend, the ropes and the things that had them bound was burned off. But my friend, they were loose. And the king, he began to say how that the Lord had sent an angel and it delivered them because, he said, because they trusted Amen. in Him. Right. They trusted in God. Right. What are you trusting in today, Amen. friend? What are you trusting in? You see, we need to trust in the power of God. You see, the Scripture tells us, the Scripture tells us that the king made a decree and he said, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. He said, don't nobody dare talk about their God. Because he recognized their God had power, greater power than he. Oh, you see, my friend, we need to we need to acknowledge today God has all power in heaven and yes, earth. Amen. Amen. You and I couldn't wiggle out a little finger if it wasn't God's will. 
Brother Jimmy Dean used to say that you can have every alarm clock set in your house. He said, but if it's not God's will for you to wake up, he said, you'll not hear the clock. <laughs> the Scripture tells us there was a man by the name of Saul. And boy, he had, he had caused trouble for the church. My, he had bound people and taken and put them in jail. He, he was there when they stoned Stephen unto death. And he went to the high priest and he desired letters of authority to go down to Damascus and to arrest anybody that, they, that he found calling upon the name of Jesus. And the Scripture tells us, my friend, that day that, my friend, as he went, there was a light that shined down from heaven. But it was so bright that he fell to Amen. the earth. Sure. Fell to the earth and he heard a voice. He heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Oh, listen. And he said, who art thou, Lord? He said, Saul was a very religious man. He had been brought up and taught the scriptures, and my, he was my, he was diligent in the Jewish religion of Judaism, and he was doing anything and everything in his power to stomp out and to stop this thing called Christianity. But God showed him he was going in the wrong direction. And he told him, he said, Lord, he's, uh, Saul said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? He said, Arise and go into the city and it'll be told thee what thou shalt do. And he got up and they led him by the hand. The, the light was so bright that he couldn't see. And the Scripture goes on to tell us that the Lord spoke unto a man by the name of Ananias, told him to go down to Straight Street. There's a man by the name of Saul Tarsus and he's praying. And I said, well, in my words, he said, now wait a minute, Lord, I've heard much about this man. He's even got letters of authority to come down here and arrest anybody that's calling on your name. I told the church here not too long ago, we was, we was talking about this scripture, I said, sometimes we don't like to get out of our comfort zone. But then I was told to get out of his comfort zone, in other words. He said, you go. He's a chosen vessel to bear my name under, under the, uh, to the kings and to Israel and to the Gentiles. When Ananias went in, the Scripture said that he laid his hand on him and, and he prayed uh, and, his, and Saul's sight came back. God opened his eyes to see Jesus was the Savior that he needed more than his religion. You know there's a lot of people today have religion. A lot of people have religion. Usually it, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's made up of, of ceremonial rituals that they do over and over and over. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> I want you to know something, my friend. We must, we must be born again. Amen. Amen. Jesus told Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a ruler of the, uh, of the Jews, and, and Jesus said, ye must be born again. Nicodemus didn't understand what he was talking about. But Jesus told him that you must be born again. Born of the Spirit. Oh, listen. You know, uh, Nicodemus was trying to, to, to think about this in a natural form. How he could be born again. But it wasn't the natural birth. But it was a spiritual birth. And he needed his eyes open to understand. Except you repent and, and you're born again. The Scripture said you'll perish. You see, Paul and Silas had been beaten, many stripes laid upon them, and been cast into the inner jail, and they had, had chains and stocks put on them. And the Scripture said at midnight they prayed and they sang praises unto God. Amen. And all of a sudden that jail began to shake, and, and the doors opened up, their, their stocks and chains fell off. And the old jailer woke up and seeing the doors open thought they'd escaped and he drew his sword and was going to take his own life because the penalty for letting someone escape was that they took their place. He was going to kill himself. Paul said, do yourself no harm. We're all here. And he came in and kneeled down and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, listen. 
Well, the Scripture tells us that, that Paul and Silas told him there, he said, to believe. He said, he said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you know, a lot of times people, they put so much emphasis on this and on that. I had a young boy that I used to work with and saw him in a restaurant here a while back and talking to him about going to church. And he said, preacher, he said, I'd go to church and I'd get saved if I really believed I could live it. And I looked at him face to face and I said, you're right. You can't. I said, but if you will surrender your heart unto the Lord and let the Lord live through you, I said, you can live a Christian life. You see, the devil has got people convinced all oh, living a Christian life is just too hard. No, I want to tell you something. God didn't say, I'll save you and, and make all your roads smooth. I, he said, I, He didn't say He'll save us and take away all our problems and troubles and trials. I, but He said, I'll not leave thee. I'll not forsake thee. I'll go with thee all the way. Paul said, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But all oh, listen, my friend, the Scripture teaches us and then it tells us that His grace is sufficient. There are times that we have prayed. There are times that we have prayed for God to, to deliver us. And Paul had prayed about the messenger, the thorn in the flesh. And my hair a few weeks ago, my we'd had four kidney stones in just a few months. And I was praying, Lord, to, to deliver us from this. And then I begin to think about Paul and how he said, he said, I'd rather much glory in my infirmity and that the power of God may rest upon me. Listen, my friend, it's not about the things that we go through with in this life, in this physical body, but oh, look what we've got and to look forward to. Amen. I've got to have glasses to see to read. I've got hearing aids, but since I've got this sinus infection, they don't do a whole lot of good for me about hearing. My steps don't have the spring that they used to have. I don't breathe as good as I used to breathe. But oh, one day after a while, one day after a while, John said, Beloved, it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. But we know that when He shall appear, when Jesus shall appear, we shall be like Him. Amen. And for we shall see Him as He is. Praise Listen, my name. friend. And, it's in, and the Scripture said, And every man that had this hope in Him and purified himself even as He is pure. Oh, has your eyes been open to the power of God, of His salvation? Listen, my friend, the Scripture teaches us and the Scripture tells us, my friend, that there is none other salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given whereby we must be saved. <coughs> you see, God wants to reveal Himself to, to mankind. And, and we see that God has revealed Himself. He revealed Himself through, uh, through the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, uh, who come to bring salvation. Uh, and, oh, listen, you know the Scripture, the Scripture teaches and tells us, uh, it said, but what saith it? Uh, the Word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the Word of faith which we preach. Uh, I tell people, listen, uh, and prayer, uh, a sinner's prayer is not a uh, uh, great big words. Uh, it's not a big long prayer. Uh, it's just a sincere desire uh, of the the heart. Amen. That's what God wants to hear. He said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. He said, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, God's revealed His plan of salvation. He's revealed His power. When Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had died there on the cross of Calvary, and my friend, He yielded up the ghost and He said, it's finished. Listen, the only thing that you and I have to do is to accept what Jesus has done on our behalf. What He's done for us. He paid a debt that you and I owed that we could never pay. Oh, listen, the Scripture said that God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I love to read there in Romans where, where Paul was talking about uh, the things that He's done for us. Why? 
Because God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. You see, it's not God's will that any perish. It's not God's will that any be lost. Oh, listen. Listen, my friend. It's God's will that we come to the knowledge of the truth that our eyes, that our spiritual eyes be opened and to recognize the power of God. And Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Do we believe? Do we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ? Salvation is so simple. You see, it's man that makes it hard. Simply believing in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. That He can give you the forgiveness. I've had people tell me, Preacher, you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. I said, listen, I don't need to know. God already knows all of that. And yet He stands with outstretched arms uh, saying, Whosoever will, uh, let Him come. Amen. Come just as you are. People sometimes tell me, Preacher, when I get this straightened out, when I get that took care of and get this done, I'll go to Amen. church and I'll get right. I said, listen, Put it in God's hands. Let God work it out. Let God straighten it all out. My friend, and everything will fall into place where you need to be. The Scripture teaches us at the name of Jesus, every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess. It's not a question of whether or not you're going to. The question is when. When will it be? You see, in this life, there's grace and there's mercy available to whosoever will call upon the Lord. But there's coming a day, and the Scripture said, but I'm sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. You see, there's a judgment out there. There's a judgment. And if we don't, if we don't call upon Him and, and confess Him to be Lord and Savior of our life on this side of, of eternity, we will do it in the judgment. The question, my friend, is when will we? I hope and pray that your eyes will be opened spiritually that you'll see that you need Jesus in your life more than anything else. Oh, listen, as we said a moment ago, it's not about how much money you've got in your bank account. It's not about the job position you hold. It's not about how fancy a home you live in or the kind of automobile you drive. We come down to leaving this world when we come down to that appointed time and we don't know when that's going to be. The only thing that's going to matter is is your name recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Brother Daniel. Amen. Let's open our hymn books to page 327. Stand together this morning. Today is the day of salvation. <coughs> Your eyes being opened. Today is a day for you to know that power, to know that protection, to know that provision, to know that proclamation, all these things. The preacher preached this morning. Your eyes can be opened. Today is your day. Let's sing together this morning. Thank you. 
but the angels don't. But it says when we believe, that we rejoice in the presence of the angels. You could have a shout in heaven today. You step out from where you're at and say, I want to know Jesus is my Savior today. I want to be like Nicodemus. I want to be like Saul of Tarsus. I want to know Jesus. I want to know Jesus see how things begin before I before I invite my loved ones out. Now you know. Invite your loved ones out. Come out this evening. We'll begin at 6 o'clock. We'll start worship at 6 o'clock this evening. How many of y'all have ever heard Sister Grace Park sing? Any of y'all? None of you are going to be blessed this evening. You are going to be blessed this evening. She's a local lady from up in Beckley, and she does a wonderful job. Come out and you'll be blessed. Be praying for Brother Mike. Be praying for his voice, the sinus infection. God will just anoint him. Maybe tonight we'll see someone come to know Christ as Savior. Before we leave today, I wonder. I wonder if you just would you would just bow your head with me this time. Maybe we'll just bow their head. This morning, if you said, I didn't come and pray today, but I sure would like for you to remember me in prayer. No one else is looking around. Just myself and the evangelist. Would you raise your hand up and say, I want you to pray for me, Daniel. Amen. Anyone raise your hand today? I want you to pray for me. Amen. God do bless. God do bless. Now we won't dismiss our service until the last night of the revival. I want to ask if you would to bow your heads with me. I ask Brother Mike if you would to step to the back of the church and uh, give him just a minute to get to the back of the church and then you'll be dismissed. And so, God, lift him up in prayer. Pray for Sister Grace this evening. Come out expecting a blessing. God has blessed us abundantly, over abundantly. In our Sunday school lesson this morning and the Word of God, there has been enough word in this church this morning, Brother David, to see all the world saved. Yes, Lord, yes. We just need to share the gospel. Thank you. You are dismissed.